There you go. Hey, welcome, Paradigm Shifters, to March 2nd, 2021. Yeah, let's take a deep breath in to that date. March 2nd, 2021. We have officially 62 days into 2021. And we're talking today about rising and re-emerging. It's also, we're celebrating, or we are, whatever that word is, celebrating life. It's a life celebration today of the one year anniversary where we first went into lockdown. So Paradigm Shifters, this is a global thing. It's not just one area. The entire globe is re-emerging and, and everything. So welcome you know, and welcome all of our new folks that came in as we're approaching 800 people now, almost this shy of it. And let's take a deep breath in and put a wave of love to all the countries, all the people, all of the energy that has, uh, that is out there. So I have a little PowerPoint, then we're going to have some participation. So while I get this set up, let me ask you a question. How different was your life one year ago? How different was your life one year ago? Let's take a minute and think about that. How different was your life one year ago? I know for me, you know, there's things seem so like, Mm, uh, the things that were bugging me were bugging me. <laughs> they don't bother me anymore. So how different was your life one year ago in 2020? Yeah. So here's a little PowerPoint. Rise and reemerge, Paradigm Shifters, March 2nd, 2021. Let's breathe into this picture here. Yeah. Rise and reemerge. Okay. So this morning, when I was getting ready to, for this, um, I went for a walk. I was reading a poem with my meditation group called The Mighty Oaks. And I realized I hadn't gone to my um, park that I go to since the storms. And I decided to go over there and see how everybody was. Those trees are my friend. And as I was walking, this tree had fallen over. And I just like, whoa. And I, you know, like this is a mighty oak. These oaks are over a hundred trees. You know, a lot of them over a hundred years old. This one had fallen over in the ice storm and I'm like, how does this tie in with rise and reemerge? And, you know, I spoke and I'm like, oh, there's tears that come. There's ice that come and there's always a reemerging. So I looked and the first thing I thought was this is going to be a great climbing spot for the kids. Because the tree lay down and let the kids climb on it. Then I also saw this. This is where it was uprooted. And I got closer because I wanted to see what is in there. I wanted to see the root systems. So I was going down there and I'm like, whoa, you know, this is a great place for all the bugs and stuff to grow <laughs> and all of the, you know, things underneath there. And then I noticed the green grass is growing already here all around it. And I started to go, oh, God has a bigger plan than I can see now. And I needed to see that root system. So this, you know, this all happened in the last hour before I got in here. And I'm like, this is so perfect. So this is about a book called Your Life. There's so many things written on the left hand, everything you know, all the things. And what if this is just another page in another chapter of your life? And the name of this book 
is called Now. This is David when he was two, and he would play around with my books. <laughs> the power of now. He's 16 now. But, you know, what if this is the chapter called Now? Now, how can we really, really appreciate now when we're in the middle of stuff? So I wanted to read something today. A couple weeks ago, Kelly Glover came on here and uh, she just came on. It was three weeks after both her parents had passed. And she just sent this out today. And I wanted to read this to you. Wow, I received a card from my parents' hospice care team today. As strange as this is going to sound, being with my parents while they were actively dying was the best gift that God could have ever given us. We got to love on them and tell them how much we loved them while they were still with us. And we couldn't have asked for a better team of hospice care workers. We had no idea we'd lose both parents within days of each other. But having this hospice team with us along with these other people, I don't want to necessarily name, as extra supports, helped us to make it through without losing our faith. Without losing our faith. Sanity or strength. I hope I'm fortunate enough to transition in the comfort of my home, own home with my loved ones and a hospice care team like my parents had. So listen to this. We're going to breathe into this. God bless all hospice care workers in the world. God bless all. You know, because they're living their calling. They're living their passion. They're here to help families in transition. I just love it. So I wanted to show this little video. If, I, if you've seen it before, great. Let's look at it from new eyes in 20 March 2nd 2021 It is not death most people are afraid of It is getting to the end of life only to realize that you never truly lived there was a study done, a hospital study, on 100 elderly people facing death close to their last breath. They were asked to reflect about their life's biggest regret. Nearly all of them said they regretted not the things they did, but the things they didn't do. The risks they never took. The dreams they didn't pursue. I ask you, Will your last words be, if only I hit, hey, you, wake up, why do you exist? Life is not meant to simply work, wait for the weekend and pay rent. No, no, I don't know much, but I know this. Every person on this earth has a gift. And I apologize to the black community, but I can no longer pretend. Martin Luther King, that man never had a dream. That dream had him. See, people don't choose dreams. Dreams choose them. So the question I'm getting to is, do you have the courage to grab the dream that picked you, that befits you and grips you? Or will you let it get away and slip through? You know, I learned a fact about airplanes the other day. Now, this was, this was so surprising, see? I was talking to a pilot, and he told me that many of his passengers think planes are dangerous to fly in. But he said, actually, it is a lot more dangerous for a plane to stay on the ground. <laughs> I said, what? Like, how does that sound? Well, he said, he said, because on the ground, the plane starts to rust, malfunction and wear much faster than it ever would if it was in the air. As I walked away, I thought, yeah, makes total sense because planes were built to live in the skies. And every person was built to live out the dream they have inside. So it is perhaps the saddest loss to live a life on the ground without ever taking off. See, most of us are afraid of the thief, 
that comes in the night to steal all of our things. But there's a thief in your mind who is after your dreams. His name is Doubt. If you see him, call the cops and keep him away from the kids. Because he is wanted for murder, for he has killed more dreams than failure ever did. He wears many disguises and like a virus will leave you blinded, divided, and turn you into a kinda. See, kinda is lethal. You know what kinda is. It's a lot of kinda people. You kinda want a career change. You kinda want to get straight A's. You kinda want to get in shape. Simple math, no numbers to crunch. If you kinda want something, then you will kinda get the results you want. What is your dream? What ignites that spark? You can't kinda want that. You got to want it with every part of your whole heart. Will you struggle? Yeah, yeah, you will struggle. No way around it. You will fall many times, but who's counting? Just remember, there's no such thing as a smooth mountain. If you want to make it to the top, then there are sharp ridges that must be stepped over. There will be times you get stressed and things you get depressed over. But let me tell you something. Steven Spielberg was rejected from film school three times. Three times, but he kept going. The television execs fired Oprah, said she wasn't fit for TV, but she kept going. Critics told Beyonce that she couldn't sing. She went through depression, but she kept going. Struggle and criticisms are prerequisites for greatness. That is the law of this universe and no one escapes it. Because pain is life, but you can choose what type. Either the pain on the road to success or the pain of being haunted with regret. You want my advice? Don't think twice. We have been given a gift that we call life. So don't blow it. You were not defined by your past. Instead, you were born anew in each moment. So own it now. Sometimes you gotta leap and grow your wings on the way down. You better get the shot off before the clock runs out. Cause ain't no overtime in life. No do-over. And I know I sound like I'm preaching or speaking with force. But if you don't use your gift, then you sell not only yourself, but the whole world. Sure. So what invention do you have buried in your mind? What idea, what cure, what skill do you have inside to bring out to this universe? Uni meaning one, verse meaning song. You have a part to play in this song. So grab that microphone and be brave. Sing your heart out on life stage. You cannot go back and make a brand new beginning. But you can start now and make a brand new ending. I love that. I just love that. So start now and have a brand new ending. And that's where the rise, rise and renew. So today was... This is what I want to end with here and then have some you participate here. I've been studying Joe Dispenza and his comeback. And this is what he journals every day to this question. So screenshot this, whatever you want. This is a great question. What is the greatest ideal of myself? that I can do today. I love that. I love that. And what is that greatest ideal of myself that I can do today? You know, and for me, when I saw that and I'm like, oh, today is the last day for me in my 60s and it, it was like oh well what is that oh so go out and, and living that ideal self because things I'm you, you hit a magical timeline thing <laughs> that will not be there tomorrow as we grow and grow what is the most the greatest idea of myself I can do today so I'm going to take a deep breath here, and that's what I had really wanted to present to you know, all of you shifters, and so many of you have come in in the last month, I think a little over 100. And we started in August, 
with a handful. And it's grown and grown and grown this energy of, yes, we are rising. Yes, we are reemerging together. So I wanted to invite um, some of my buddies here. And I would love to have Bill, can you come on and talk to us a little bit about where it was that you shifted, even in the last year, or what would you love to tell us? And what are you committed to emerging as? To tell yourself. Thank you, Judy. So I'm Bill Moreno. I am in Los Angeles, California, and I am a life mastery consultant and coach. And I remember in February where this started, it really hit me in March. This thing called COVID. And through a number of things, you know, looking back, I could see one of the gifts is how much I took for granted a year ago. How much I took for granted, even the clear sky. So with the pandemic, we had a fire here and we were evacuated and that clear sky was completely brown, unhealthy to breathe. I felt surrounded by fear and dread, pandemic, loss of my home, my wife and I's home, the neighborhood. It was just a lot of fear and dread and fear and dread. And, and it reminded me of a time, luckily, many years ago, that I was at that point the most afraid of my life, standing in the doorway of a plane with no door. And I knew when I let go of this plane, I'm gonna at least break my femur and limp for the rest of my life. All I could hear is the plane going <laughs> and my fear. And when I let go, I heard this. Silence. And in that moment, I forgot where I was, 3,000 feet in the air. I have chills from the top of my head to the tip of my toes remembering all I could, I want to say think, but I saw, this is what early man and woman saw when they looked out at this amazing earth and sky, that there is something more, and that something more is in me and all creation. And then I heard a voice, a loud voice, a commanding voice. And it said, number one, number one, you're drifting off course. And I started yelling, we're all connected. I'm not alone, I'm not alone. And the voice said, if you're yelling and talking, shut up. This is a one-way walkie-talkie. Get back on course. So re-emerging this pandemic, I am now back on course. The control is actually not in our hands. It's in our mind. The one thing we have power of is to choose our thoughts. And we do that by notice what we're noticing and focusing on the good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get to ask Carol, where, where, how have you emerged and where are you rising and emerging, re-emerging? Would you mind coming on in here and, and talking? There she is. Well, I feel like I'm emerging every day, re-emerging, um, finding out 
what I want to do and um, where I was a year ago. You know, I really don't pay much attention to time. Um, so it's hard for me to, <coughs> to figure where I was exactly, but I was reemerging from all the chemicals and everything that had been put into my body, supposedly healing me, which I'm sure that they did their job. Um, for me, that was a, a, a real awakening because I felt like, uh, like I needed to go deeper into my emotional and spiritual space and I was stuck. And the one grateful thing is that the chemotherapy and the radiation and the immunotherapy kind of worked like dynamite to clear out all of the emotional garbage that was stuck in my tissue and in my body. And so I'm very grateful for going through that. I wasn't sure I was going to come out of it, but I just kept putting one foot in front of the other and, and having trust and faith. And, um, and I'm very grateful. Wow, and we're so grateful for your journey. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love it. Yeah re-emerging you know whatever that means i love that picture the caterpillar talking to the butterfly the caterpillar saying you've changed and the butterfly saying you're supposed to <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it and let's go soon you want to come on here and and uh talk maybe about some part of your process but uh Interesting process. Um, I found that because I had moved in the last couple of years and in, and again, when my job shifted for me, um, made it more challenging to see the family. Um, and then mom went into um, assisted living and in June, she passed away. And because of what was going on with COVID, they weren't letting us see her. Weren't letting us see her, weren't letting us see her. And then the last few days they said, come see her. And the miracle of it all was that every one of us kids, there's five of us got to see her when only two of us were supposed to. So God made it available for us all to do it. And I guess now at this point, I want to honor my family. But even though I'm so far away, I needed to do that. I needed to step away from everything that I knew. Come to a place where I knew nobody or anything. I mean, I moved again in December and now I'm finding my way around again. And I'm like, oh, where's the store? <laughs> but I don't have to be anything for anyone right now. I get to figure out who I am, who I want to be, and I get to step out on that without any preconceived notions of anyone around me. And that is one of the coolest things that this time has given me. I get to be me. And finding out who that is and who I want to be, you know? And it's so, it's so refreshing. It's so much easier to just breathe these days. I'm just really thankful that I can, I can do that. And to break free from any paradigms that I have. And last night I hit, I broke free from another one. And I have a, um, a project I'm working on and I just wrote out the first module last night. And it was just so easy and so clear. And this morning I woke up with modules two and three in my head because I had the free space with no preconceived notions. And I'm so very thankful. Wow. Yeah. Now, well, thank you so much, all of you. And uh, so appreciative of, of your journeys.
you know, and the, it's, I think maybe when I was out walking in the trees, it's like, what if that one tree falling over allowed some of those little trees to see the sun and grow further? And what if, for me, it, there's this mm, privilege of seeing, instead of not stepping and pushing away, you know, stepping out, um, but stepping back, stepping back and seeing a higher picture. And there's, there's so much emotions there so much i saw the trees and i'm like ah oh. you know my dogs are buried underneath a giant oak in wimberley i haven't visited that in a long time and it reminded me that oh it's time to take a drive and go down and reflect and renew and grow so yeah thank you so much bill marino Carol Fittner and Suzanne Kiefer for making this possibly the most powerful paradigm shifters that we've ever had. And I so appreciate each one of you for coming on and that this will live on YouTube for March 2nd, 2021. And that this day is part of your history so, yeah, and, then, uh, and then tomorrow, I'm going to be 70, and then, boy, who knows what that's going to be, and, you know, and so I have, like, there's so many plans, you know, I'm going to go into a deep dive for four days, all of this, but there's something about taking time today to appreciate each and every one of you, and each and every one of the shifters who's continued this process and the new people that are coming in because there's there's such a global oneness happening so uh, there you go